British sixth generation fighter Tempest, its fate will be difficult. Not having had time to properly digest the fifth generation fighters, the world's leading countries rushed to storm the next peak, the sixth generation fighter. Six groups of countries are participating in a tough race. This is the United States with its two projects, FAXX and Next Generation Air Dominance for the Navy and Air Force respectively. These are Russia and China, and the names of their projects are still unknown. This is Japan with its program, in which some sources is called FX and others F3. And finally, two groups of European countries. This French-German-Spanish alliance promotes the Next Generation Fighter, and finally, the British-Italian project Tempest. That's him, and we'll talk in this video. You'll find out how the British and Italians see the sixth-generation fighter, what its prospects are, and in general, why the Western alliance of countries is conducting so many projects at once. Isn't it wise to join forces? 2018 was the year of the announcement of the British Tempest program. A mock-up of the vehicle was unveiled at the Farnborough Air Show as part of the program the British BAE Systems MBDA, Rolls-Royce, as well as the Italian Leonardo teamed up to form Team Tempest. British specialists play the role of the first fiddle. It's planned that such planes will replace Eurofighter Typhoon in 17 years in 2035 and will be operated together with the F-35. Two billion pounds sterling will be spent by the British government on the project by 2025. British Defense Secretary Gavin Williamson spoke about this on July 16, 2018 at the Farnborough Air Show. So what is Tempest? The mock-up shown in 2018 looks nothing like the F-35 or the Eurofighter. The machine will be made according to the no-tail aerodynamic scheme. It'll get two sides deflected keels as well as two engines. They want to equip the plane with an interceptorless light, which contributes to the reduction of radar visibility. The new aircraft is to get a special multi-mode Orpheus aircraft engine manufactured by Rolls-Royce. It'll also be used to generate electricity to power a large number of electronic systems on board and the operation of laser weapons. The design is created taking into account the minimization of the aircraft's heat signature. After all, the plane can be detected not only by the locator but also by infrared sensors, which by the way have the Russian five-generation fighter Su-57. The pilot will be able to control the drones and will also get a directed energy weapon at his disposal. In addition, British engineers want to create an onboard control system that would work in conjunction with self-learning artificial intelligence. All this would make the pilot an adjunct to the aircraft complex. He would make only the most important decisions, while numerous related tasks would be taken over by the automation. A similar approach can be seen in modern aircraft, in particular the F-35. It's reported that the aircraft will be able to use existing air-to-air -air missiles such as AIM-9 Sidewinder, AIM-132, ASRAM, and AIM-120 AMRAM, missiles that are preparing to enter services such as MBDA Meteor, which is designed to hit targets beyond visual range up to 200 kilometers, and more projected missiles. And of course, the use of laser weapons is assumed. There is one aspect that distinguishes the Tempest from all other fighters, both existing and prospective. In 2018, BAE Systems showed a concept of a virtual cockpit for the advanced fighter. It implies almost complete abandonment of instruments in the cockpit in their usual form. All information will be displayed on the pilot's helmet display, so he'll not need to be distracted by the instruments in the cockpit. The same helmet will have a built-in cockpit gaze tracker to measure the pilot's workload and determine fatigue and mental strain. But one multifunctional touchscreen display Tempest will still get in case the helmet display system fails. Again, it should be understood that by the time of the prototype, all these details of the project can be revised. What can be said for sure is that, like any modern combat aircraft, the Tempest will be part of a system of systems, elements of a combat information and command system that allows it to receive and process information in real time. According to the plans of the British military, the combat aircraft will be optionally manned, It'll be able to fly under the control of a pilot or in fully autonomous mode. Judging by the photographs of the model released by BAE Systems, the prospective aircraft will be equipped with S-shaped ducts, screens of the engine nozzle, and internal compartments of weapons. Such solutions allow for reducing the fighter's radar and infrared signature. Other details about the Tempest have not yet been revealed. 
Looking at the photos, we'd like to add that if the nickname Penguin is suitable for the F-35, then the nickname Pelican is very suitable for this aircraft. At the end of August 2020, the British company BAE Systems began testing the Tempest model in a wind tunnel in Wharton, Lancashire. According to Flight Global, the data obtained during the test will be used to refine the design of the advanced combat aircraft. The research is being conducted at airspeeds over Mach 2. Mysterious clarification. Do they plan to accelerate the British sixth-generation fighter to two speeds of sound? We'll have to wait until 2025 when the prototype flight will take place. True, on July 18, 2022, Britain announced that the demonstration aircraft would be launched for the first time within the next five years, so perhaps the British sixth-generation fighter will take to the skies in 2027 as well. Now let's talk about the prospects for this project, and they are quite vague, just like Foggy Albion itself. First of all, it should be said that the British have already tried to develop a fifth-generation fighter on their own. It was the Future Offensive Air System program, the purpose of which was to create a replacement for the Royal Air Force's Tornado GR-4 strike aircraft. It was cancelled in 2005 and replaced by the Deep and Persistent Offensive Capability, which was then also closed. In the end, the British decided to buy the F-35 from the US and not bother spending too much on development. This was a wise decision. It would have been incredibly difficult to pull off such a project on their own. It's not for nothing that the British have already managed to involve Sweden in the project. Stockholm finally and irrevocably buried the national fighter of the fifth generation, known in narrow circles as the Flag System 2020, a small country with a population of 10 million people who cannot afford such a program. Negotiations are now underway with the Japanese, who are developing their sixth generation F3 fighter, Ben Wallace, Britain's defense secretary, said, Our work with Japan and Italy on advanced technologies like this shows the advantages of our alliances around the world. And in Italy, work on Tempest has decided to accelerate. The country has budgeted 220 million euros in 2022 and 345 million in 2023, with a projected total investment of 3.8 billion euros by 2036. And even after such support, the future of the Tempest project cannot be considered assured. The fact is that the market for combat aviation is incredibly narrow. This is visible if you compare it with the civil aviation market. Suffice to say that, as of today, not a single country in the world has bought the Russian Su-57 except Russia itself. And no country has shown interest in the Chinese J-20 except China itself. Neither the new-budget Swedish Gripen E or the Russian MiG-35, which they wanted very much to make an export success. In other words, sharing the market of combat aviation is becoming more and more difficult every year, even though its potential is constantly growing. The price of new aircraft is very, very high, and there are just as many people willing to offer their development as before. Now let's imagine that the British-Italian Tempest and the French-German-Spanish next-generation fighter are successfully brought to production. So what next? The planes are going to be incredibly expensive, it's already clear. To reduce their cost and the burden on the budget, they need to be sold. And in this regard, the European Next Generation fighter is a clear and unconditional favorite. Among its potential buyers are not only the leading EU economies, but also several other EU countries to varying degrees, dependent on the decisions made in Berlin and Paris. It'd be naive to believe that these countries will choose not a pan-European fighter jet, but the brainchild of Brexit and Germany's political leverage in Europe is incomparably greater than that of Foggy Albion. And for sure, the United States will also interfere in the division of the sales market. Although now one cannot rule out any possible development of the situation, perhaps Germany and France will fall out and each will start the project with emphasis on their requirements. This is what happened in its time with the European fourth generation fighter project, which fell apart, becoming what we now know as Typhoon and Dassault Rafale. Or maybe Britain realizes that it can't pull off a program that could cost more than $50 billion. But for now, the Franco-German alliance is stronger than ever, and the British are overwhelmed by national pride and nostalgia for a great empire long gone. What are your thoughts on the British-Italian sixth-generation fighter? Write them in your comments below. If you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and support our channel with your subscription. There will be many more videos about interesting weapon innovations to come.